1.4 has just recently been announced, and if you saw my video rounding everything up, you'll know that there are weapons that are on their way to the game, and we gotta talk about them. Before we get started, Kings, Queens, and Majesties, do be aware that this discussion should be taken with a grain of salt, as while the leaker is pretty credible, these stats have not yet been confirmed by MiHoYo themselves. Alright, let's get into it. The first weapon we're going to talk about is the Windbloom Ode. You're going to be able to obtain this 4 star weapon from the Windbloom Flower Festival. You will actually be able to obtain up to 5 of them, which is perfect for refining this weapon. So as you guys can see from the in-game description that we have from the leaker, the bow is adorned with a nameless flower that bears the earnest hopes of an equally nameless person. The lore runs deep here. I feel like this is heavily implying that the person who owned this bow was the nameless bard. Which, if you guys don't know who this is, this is the person who Venti took their form from. Moving on to the design. It's design I like. It's pretty decent. It has a cute little flower on it and I enjoy the look of it. Overall though, I can't say I'm a fan of the brown color scheme, but it's passable. Now onto the nitty gritty secondary stat. The secondary stat for the bow is Elemental Mastery. This is the third bow to receive Elemental Mastery as a secondary stat. The first one being the four star Stringless and the second one being the three star Raven Bow. Its passive ability is called the Windbloom Wish. And as for what the ability does, after you use your elemental skill, your attack receives an increase of 16% for 6 seconds. This passive ability is really good, and it's very easy for almost any bow user to use and capitalize on. That makes this bow very important for you free to play users. Please make sure you get your hands on it. The last thing I'm going to mention for the weapon is the ascension materials that you're going to need. The totals for all the materials you're going to need will be available on the screen, but to be more specific, the ascension material needed to enhance this weapon is going to be the shackles, which are available from their respective domains on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. The monster materials you're going to need are leyline brand which you can get from Abyss Mages, and Energy Nectar, which you can get from Whopper Flowers. The total Mora cost to get this weapon maxed out to 90 will be 150k. From there we're gonna move on to the 5 star weapon, Elegy for the End. As for how you can obtain this weapon, it is unfortunately from the gacha. A bow as lovely as any bard's lyre, its arrows pierce the heart like a lamenting sigh. This description I feel can genuinely describe Venti's emotions about a lot of the things that he's probably had to do in his life. Now while the description might be sad, the design for this weapon is actually very nice. I love the way it looks, it definitely reminds me of an instrument, and it just screams elegance. This and tying the name in together is just too good. Moving on from there, the secondary stat for the bow is Energy Recharge. This is the third bow to receive Energy Recharge as a substat. The other bows being the 4 star Favonius War Bow and the 4 star Sacrificial Bow. With that information in mind, you guys now understand that the Elegy is the first 5 star bow to receive this secondary stat. The passive ability for the bow is called the Parting Refrain. And before we delve into the details, just know it's a lot, but I'll do my best to sum it up for you. So, the passive has an effect that's called Millennial Movement. This effect gives you a bonus of 60 Elemental Mastery. On top of that, when you hit an enemy, you gain a Sigil. After hitting 4 enemies 0.2 seconds apart from each other, you unlock a buff called Millennial Movement Farewell Song, which increases the Elemental Mastery by 100, totaling your Elemental Mastery to 160. And that's not all you receive, you also get an attack increase of 20% for 12 seconds. This effect can only be activated every 20 seconds, and the effect cannot stack with other bonuses of the same type. What an amazing ability, huh? This bow is clearly made for Venti, but my head is already spinning with ideas for running this thing on a Melt Ganyu team. Moving on from there, let's talk about the Ascension materials that you're going to need to max out the weapon. For starters, the Ascension material that you're going to need is Boreal's Wolf's Teeth, which are available on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. The monster material you're going to need are Black Horns, which can be obtained from Midichurls, and you'll also need Insignias, which are dropped by the Fatui. The total Mora cost for this is going to be 225k. It's a little pricey, but it's a 5 star weapon. I don't know what you expect. Next up, we got the 4 star Alley Hunter. Unfortunately, you can only obtain this weapon from the gacha. An intricate, opulent longbow. It once belonged to a gentleman thief who was never caught. This description is very interesting in terms of lore. You could say it seems like a reference to child, but I don't think that's the case. A gentleman thief could very well be referencing a character that we haven't seen yet. Moving on to the design, I'm not gonna lie to you, I really like all these alley weapons. They're all good looking, and the whole blue-black color scheme is very appealing to my eyes. 
Moving on, the secondary stat for this bow is attack percentage. This is actually the fifth bow to receive attack percentage as a secondary stat. The others being 4 star Prototype Crescent, 4 star Rust, 4 star Royal Bow, and the 5 star Amos Bow. Let's talk about what makes it different though. Its passive is called Opadin Ambush, and its effect is as follows. While the person who has this bow equipped is not in use, their damage is increased by 2% every second up to a max of 20%, and when the character is on the field for more than 4 seconds, the damage buff is decreased by 4% every second until it reaches 0%. This passive is going to be amazing for characters like Fischl and Iona who are almost never on the field and who you use as kind of a sub DPS. I honestly think this bow has a lot of promise. Alright, let's talk about what you're going to need to stock up for this bow. The essential materials you're going to need are the Dekarabia pieces, which are available on Mondays, Thursdays, and Sundays. The monster materials you'll need are the Black Horns, which can be obtained from Mita Churls, and Scrolls, which you can obtain from Sama Churls. And the total Mora cost for this is going to be 150k. Moving on to the next weapon, the Alley Flash. I feel so bad free to play players. This is another weapon that is unfortunately obtained through the gacha. Its description reads, A straight sword as black as night. It once belonged to a thief who roamed the benighted streets. As you can see, the alley weapons seem to share similarities involving the same mysterious thief. I am genuinely interested to learn more about this character considering that they own not just a bow, but a sword as well. Is it actually just a reference to child? I hope not. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. As I stated before, I love the design of the alley weapons, and this one is no different. However, to talk about the sword more specifically, I love the hilt design and the plume wrapping around here. It's so clean! It's really nice, I really like how these weapons are designed. The secondary stat for this is Elemental Mastery. This is the third sword to receive Elemental Mastery as its secondary stat, the other two being the 4 star Iron Sting and the 3 star Dark Iron Sword. The passive ability for the sword is called Itinerant Hero, its ability being that it has a consistent 12% attack bonus until you take damage, which will disable this effect for 5 seconds. This seems pretty cool. I like the idea of having to rely on not taking damage to have optimal DPS. A few people I can see this working on are the Traveler or maybe even Shingsho if you're running him as a main DPS, but why would anybody be running that as a meme, right? Right? <laughs> Anyway, moving on, the essential materials that you're going to need are the Decarabian pieces, which are available on Monday, Thursdays, and Sundays, and the monster material you'll need are the Black Horns, which you can obtain from Mita Churls, and Scrolls, which you can obtain from Sama Churls. The total Mora cost for all this is going to be 150k. Moving on to the last weapon here, we have Wine and Song. In order to obtain this weapon is, you guessed it, it's, it's the gacha, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, its in-game description reads, A songbook from a bygone aristocratic era, whose composer has become forgotten. It chronicles the tale of a certain heroic outlaw. This is interesting. It feels like it might be about the unnamed bard. However, this is just speculation. I really find the bits of lore that are teased in these weapons to be very good food for thought. What do you guys think about all this? Talking about its design, it's a book, so it's eh. You know, to be honest, most of the books all look the same to me anyway, but I like the colors. Moving on, the secondary stat for this is Energy Recharge. This is the third catalyst with this substat, the other two being the 4 star Favonius Codex and the 3 star Otherworldly Story. The passive ability is called Ever Changing, and its effect is, when you hit an opponent with a normal attack, you reduce stamina consumptions of a sprint or a dodge by 14% for 5 seconds. Additionally, using a sprint or dodge increases attack by 20% for 5 seconds. This passive is pretty interesting. It's not exactly something I see being optimal for most Catalyst users, but I do see it having potential. This is something that I feel like I'll have to play with to find out if it's actually worth the investment. This is just my opinion though, with as little experience I do have with Catalyst users, so if you guys feel otherwise, please let me know. Moving on, the Ascension materials you're going to need to enhance this weapon are going to be Boreal's Wolf's Teeth, which are available on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. The monster materials you'll need will be Leyline Branches, which you can obtain from Abyss Mages, and Treasure Hoarder Insignias, which you can guess are dropped by... That's right, you guessed it, Treasure Hoarders! What am I doing? I'm not... Dora. What the? the total Mora cost is 150k. And with that, Kings, Queens, and Majesties, 
the weapon roundup is done. Which weapon are you most excited for? Don't be afraid to let me know down in the comments. Anyway, that's it for me. If you guys liked the video, make sure you leave a like. If you like me, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell icon. And lastly, check out my Twitch, where I stream Genshin practically every day. Later.